There are many things about our world that we know are true in one form or another. One of them is that despite all of the incredible work we've done trying to catalog all of the life on Earth, we still don't know everything that exists. There are jungles, wide open plains, the depths of the ocean, and more that we are yet to fully explore, and thus we don't get to see all of the life that lives within. We also don't always get to see the animals that we know exist. Whether it be through the areas they live or interference causing them to be nearly extinct, some animals are very hard to find. Join us as we show you 20 mysterious animals that have rarely been seen. Number 20. White Moose now before you go scoffing at this first entry, you may be thinking that a white moose is not really a rare thing, but it honestly is, because your first instinct may be to say that this is a moose with albinism, or perhaps a genetic disorder that causes the animal to lose pigment in its skin, turning them white as a result. It's something that affects both humans and animals, and is actually something that can kill them due to the protection that their skin loses via going white. But if it were merely a moose with albinism, that would wouldn't make it a mysterious creature, just a genetically affected one. However, when it comes to moose, there's another way for them to get white fur. It's referred to as a genetic variation, and it happens when a group of moose are so isolated in the world that they actually develop the white fur. It apparently happens to other animals as well, like with polar bears and certain types of foxes. But because it requires certain conditions to have the white fur emerge, there are only certain places in the world that contain these white moose. So Sweden is one place where they're seen the most and where people will often get video of them. A key irony with these moose though is that while they're different looking than other moose in the world, they're not a different species. That's a key thing to note because sometimes a coloration difference can be enough to cause someone to think that they're looking at a different species, but it's not the case. Still though, if you were to see a white moose, you would likely think that you'd see either an albino or some new creature that simply walked out of a fairy tale. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Spanish Dancer Nuda Branch now, here's another one where the name doesn't exactly tell you what we're about to discuss. And given how the name might sound, you could be getting some rather dark thoughts. So get your mind out of the gutter so that we can get back to talking about rare animals. This marine gastropod is found in the Indo-Pacific Ocean and the Red Sea, and it's unusual and beautiful to say the least. It lives up to the hype in regards to being a rare creature, and one that people would likely want to see on the regular, if possible. Not only does the Spanish dancer crawl as a mode of transportation, but it also swims. If you saw this sea slug crawling across a reef like sea slugs do, you would never guess the mollusk could swim. And the reason that this is important is because other sea slugs are not actually able to swim, and so it's a rare variant that not only looks different than its kin, but it moves much differently than them as well. And when you see it move in the water, well, it honestly does look like a dancer, especially with the flowing parts going up and down as it moves through the water. Some have even said that it looks like it's doing the worm, and after seeing it for myself, I can't deny that it does look like that. Oh, but that's not all. Not only is it a killer dancer, it's a straight-up killer in the right circumstances. The Spanish dancer Nuda Branch will eat certain sponges and jellyfish and then take the toxins within them as their own. That way, when predators attack, the dancer can make them pay for even coming close. Still not enough for you, when this sea slug lays its eggs, it gives a gift to the coral reef that it's laying them in by organizing the eggs to look like a rose. Oh, what a world. Number 18. Honduran White Bats Honduran white bats are found only in Central America, ranging from Honduras through parts of eastern Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and western Panama so that's likely why you've never seen them near you. Another reason that these bats stand out is how they make their homes. Most bats live in caves, but that's not the case here. The Honduran white bat will find a leaf and then use their teeth to make a tent for themselves. When they build it a certain way, they can contain up to 15 bats from their colony on one single leaf. 
They're a very small bat, and that's how they can do so much with so little on a leaf. Oh, and if you want to know something else that's interesting, these are one of the species of bats that prefer to eat fruits more than anything. Specifically, they like figs, and that adds another interesting layer to their look. Did you notice that despite being called white bats, that they have various splashes of yellow on them? That would be because these bats used pigments from plants and figs to dye themselves, that way on a genetic level. These bats are the first mammals to do this, and it's honestly a bit surprising that they have. But then again, animals do what they want. So if these bats desire to be white and yellow, who are we to argue? Number 17. Ard Wolf. Given how the name sounds, you likely have various ideas of what an ard wolf is, but I'm going to tell you right off the bat that it's likely not what you're thinking. This animal is not related to aardvarks or wolves. The name is a reference to how, in a certain African dialect, they're referred to as earth wolves. By that, the name means that they literally eat things within the earth, like insects. Lots of them, in fact. But we're only getting started with the weirdness. While the ard wolf isn't related to the animals in its name, I can tell you that they're related to hyenas, which is odd because hyenas definitely don't go eating bugs. They prefer various other things, you know, like lions. In contrast, the aardwolf does love bugs. For example, if you were to spot one in Africa, you'd likely find it near a termite mound, and when it gets there, it's going to dive into it and eat them by the tens of thousands. I'm not joking, some aardwolves can eat up to 300,000 termites in just one meal. A rather interesting fact about how they get this accomplished is that they have a tongue that has adapted many times over to help them to get their meals, to the point where even the bites of termites are not going to affect the aardwolf's tongue. You have to protect what lets you eat. Now you may be wondering why they would eat that many of them, and it's simple. They use those termites to not only get the nutrients they need to live, but to get moisture within their bodies so that the African heat doesn't roast them to to further help with that, they're a nocturnal creature that will rest in a burrow during the day and come out to hunt at night. Number 16. Sunda Kalugo would you like to take a guess at what a Sunda Kalugo is? Well, here's a hint. It's called the Flying Lemur, but therein lies the twist once again, as the name betrays what it actually is. It is in fact not a lemur, and it does in fact not fly. Apparently, it's actually a primate. You would think that humanity would be better at naming things by now, or at the very least correcting some names of the past so that the misconceptions like this one don't continue to happen. The Sunda Flying Lemur is found throughout the parts of Southeast Asia in Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. It's one of only two kinds of flying lemurs, with the other being solely found within the Philippines. So that too is another rare creature you will not likely see. Now you may be wondering, well, if the creature doesn't fly, why did it get that name? The answer is that like many other creatures that can climb up trees, they expand their body and then will glide from one point to another. In fact, it's a creature that is so dependent upon trees that if you were to find one on the ground, it would be basically a helpless babe. It needs to be above ground in order to protect itself and get where it needs to go. And when it does glide, it can go pretty far. If high enough, it can easily glide over 300 feet and barely lose 30 feet in elevation across that distance. So yes, they are quite skilled at gliding. Oh, and if they happen to have a child, that child will actually cling to the mother's belly as she glides around, which is the personification of please don't let go. Number 15. The Hercules Beetle if you've been with us long enough, you'll know that we hate bugs in all of their shapes, sizes, and forms. The bigger the bug, the worse that things can often be. So, since we're talking about the Hercules beetle, you can guess that I'm talking about a rather large bug. It was named the Hercules beetle because it was so big and strong that it was like the hero of Greek myth, because why not name a bug after a demigod? That's not intimidating at all. There are numerous things about this beetle that do stand out, which includes how its horn can also act as a pincher, which makes it even scarier in our eyes. Furthermore, they have the ability to change their colors on a whim, and they can achieve quite a palette. The female Hercules beetles, for example, will go all black when in the night environment, and that's because they reside in an arid environment, the color can literally fade from their bodies. The insect is listed as the longest insect in the world, with respect to total length by the 
Guinness Book of World Records, which means that they included the horn in the measurement, but even still, when you have a bug that's three to seven inches, depending on whether you include its horn, that's quite the big bug. Speaking of those horns, not only do they vary in size depending upon the beetle and who its parents were, but they use them in combat. Specifically, they will fight other beetles for the right to mate with the females, and so their horns honestly become like swords. A male tries to grasp its adversary between its horns so that it can lift him into the air and then throw him to the ground, and the fight continues until one of the beetles is injured, retreats, or is simply left upside down and helpless. So yes, these beetles can be quite intense, you have been warned. Number 14. The Harlequin Toad there's a reason why the harlequin toad species are labeled what they are. They're very likely to be seen in different colors, much more than the beetles that I just talked about. Specifically, they come in orange, red, green, yellow, brown, black, and sometimes even purple, earning them the nickname clown frogs, which is another word for harlequin. What may surprise you even more than any of this, though, is the place that you will find them. They can be a great symbol to the local people in Panama, where one of these toads is the national animal, and some even refer to these animals as a symbol for fertility. Now, I can't speak as to whether or not that may be true or not for the record. That's where one final irony comes into play. You see, these toads are becoming slowly wiped from the face of the planet, and no, it is not because of a man-made thing like deforestation or even killing them off for food or profit. Rather, a significant disease hit them in their home area and then slowly began to wipe them out beginning in the 1980s. Their numbers are so low these days that many have searched for them outside of their native homes, but after they fled, they could not be found. So that also means that this toad is a truly rare sight and should be preserved if you do happen to find one. Number 13, the white orca. Now, what is with all these creatures being white? Do they all just hate the colors of the rainbow for one reason or another? Let's ponder that mystery another time as we delve into what this whale is. These white orca are often known as killer whales, and there have been so few of them ever discovered that at last check, there were only said to have been 10 that were seen in the wild. What's important to note here is that like the moose I talked about before, these whales aren't suffering from albinism. Instead, they have a genetic condition known as leucism, a condition that results in partial loss of pigmentation that can cause white, pale, or even patchy coloration of the skin, the hair, the feathers, or the scales, but not the eyes. That's why when you look at pictures of these white orcas, you can see the hints of their black coloring under their whitewashed skin. Due to these whales having their white coloring, it actually affects them on more than one level, not the least of which is hunting. They're known to blend into the waters of the world so that they can hunt their prey. But their white colors make them pretty much glow within the water, and as such, their prey can find them very easily. Many scientists hope to learn more about these white orcas simply so that they can learn more about why they've turned white and whether they can be expected to see more of them in the future. Number 12. Reticulate Collared Lizards I'm going to be upfront with you about this one. While the reticulate collared lizard is a very striking creature, and are indeed quite rare, it's because they're at the point where they're almost extinct which is something you never want to hear. Their numbers are so low that they've even been protected under law, but it came too late and some wonder if their numbers will ever bounce back. Which is sad, not only because we may lose another animal on this planet, but because these lizards are very interesting creatures. For example, if they ever get into a situation where they're scared or even threatened, they'll burst out of there with such speed that they'll eventually lift themselves up and run solely on their hind legs. And so they go from being four-legged creatures to two-legged ones in no time flat. Plus, due to their color patterns, they're not afraid to remain perfectly still and try to blend into the area that they're in. Males can have exceptional coloration during breeding season, displaying gold and yellow on their head and arms. Another interesting thing is how they evolve from community creatures to solitary ones. When they're born, they tend to make small communities with other young lizards, but then once they get older, they prefer to be a solitary creature. Either way, they're still a unique creature that everyone should fight to keep alive so that we don't drive another one of them into the realm of extinction. Number 11. Rare Blue-Eyed Cicada 
Now, you know that you're rare and valuable when someone puts a literal price on your head to bring you in alive. And no, I'm not talking about a hit on a bug. I'm talking about how scientists were at one point offering a reward of $3,000 if someone could bring them a rare blue-eyed cicada. Or... At least that's how the story goes. This is a tale about a rumor catching wildfire while still being revolved around some kind of truth. Yes, there are rare blue-eyed cicadas, and they are not something that you see every day, even when you think about the massive cicada swarms that can sometimes infest the world. Most cicadas have red eyes, but experts said that one in a million have blue eyes. So that's why the rumor began in the early 2000s, that if you were to find one of these blue-eyed bugs, you would get some money. The value of them ranged anywhere from a hundred to three thousand dollars and that's why you don't always trust everything you see or read unless you can verify the source or you see it here on the fancy banana because this rumor was never true yes you can give them to scientists for study or to your local news station but at best you'll get either a pat on the back a sticker or a name drop number 10 the iberian lynx you likely weren't expecting to see a member of the big cat family on this list. I mean, after all, the big cats are some of the most important creatures in the world due to how they're used in pop culture and revered as symbols for one reason or another. But that brings us to the Iberian lynx, one of the big cats who is very much in danger of extinction because at one point not too long ago, the lynx was in the critical stage where it was not too far from full-blown extinction. Thankfully though, some people did come together to try and help save it and now it's simply endangered, which still isn't really that great, but it is better than the alternative, I suppose. To give you some context of the species, if it had died out, it would have been the first feline extinction in about 10,000 years, and that would definitely not be something to be proud of. Number 9. The Black Sea Slug now, as I've already shown you, we had one rare sea slug, so why not have another? There honestly is a mysterious element to this black sea slug that's found in the waters of certain parts of the world. To put it simply, while much of their body is indeed black, there is a spot on its body which is brown. The phrase, sticks out like a sore thumb, comes into mind for this one, and that's not exactly an inaccurate thing to say. One diver even posted a picture of the black sea slug that he had found and asked online why they look like that. The answer that he received was to expect the unexpected and that this species of sea slug is apparently similar to another known as the spotted sea slug and so they may share some similar genetics. Or perhaps not. I mean, you never really know until you find the right answer. Number 8. White Serval if you don't know what a serval is, it's a breed of cat. And in this case, the two white servals that have been recorded in the world are indeed a case of albinism. What's more, this albinism was caused because of inbreeding within its own family. That happens quite a bit with albinism victims. The problem here is that while the white fur may seem cosmetic, the colors of the skin and fur can actually help to protect the animals from the harmful UV rays of the sun. So not having them can cause illnesses, like how one of the servals got cancer in its nose and that's probably not comfortable or cool in the end. Number 7. Sea Pigs You might look at a sea pig and think that it's a fictional animal. However, it is not. And it's a bit more common than you may think, despite never having seen one. Sea pigs are found in all of the world's oceans. In some areas, they comprise more than 95% of the total weight of animals on the deep sea floor. That's quite a bit. Are we really sure that they belong on this list? Well, yes, they do, and it's for one basic reason. The sea pigs prefer to live in deep parts of the ocean that are the coldest, which means you'll have to go really deep in order to find one, mainly into the areas where the sun doesn't provide any light. And I hope you have a submarine on hand. They may not be rare in the numerical sense, but unless you've got the right equipment, you're never going to see one in your lifetime. Number 6. The Hagfish If you look at a hagfish, you may think that you're looking at an eel. 
that's a common misconception, so don't really feel bad about it. But what's important to know is that these fish have been surprising scientists for many years. They're the only known living animals that have a skull but no vertebral column, although hagfish do have rudimentary vertebrae. Furthermore, a fossil of a hagfish found from 300 million years ago shows that their bodies are the same back then as they are now. The only difference being their eyeballs. In the past, they had eyes and could see through them, but in the present, it's said that they're blind and only have eye sockets. Their evolutionary chain is what fascinates scientists the most, and it's not hard to see why they would want to know how a creature both grew and did not grow over a period of time. Number 5. Northern Bald Ibis now, I'm not going to lie to you, when I first saw this bird, I had to do a double take because it looks kind of, well, evil. The northern bald ibis looks like a bird that'll happily feast upon your corpse and mock you as you die a slow and painful death. I might be projecting a little bit, so I'll just talk about how rare it is. It is, in fact, the most rare bird in the Middle East. In certain parts of the Middle East, there were only about a hundred pairs left, and there were only two in Syria at one point, which is how the species was once assumed to be extinct. Thankfully, though, governments would step in and help to bring the bird back to good standing, but they still have a long way to go before it's fully off of the endangered list. Number 4. The Ghost Shark now, if there really was a ghost shark in the waters, and it was rare to find because of its ghost-like appearance, very few people would probably ever want to go into the water where it lived. In truth, however, the ghost shark is actually not a shark. They merely share an ancestor, and their appearance is somewhat shark-like. Ghost sharks are specialist deep water dwellers who spend most of their time anywhere between 400 to 2,000 meters gliding slowly over the seabed, all in search of invertebrate prey. So that's another reason that you're not going to see one. They are likely to be pretty deep in the water. Despite all of that, if you do see one up close, you're going to be freaked out. So please just don't try and go find one for yourself. Number 3. Black Naped Pheasant Pigeon There's a lot going on in that name and many people wouldn't want to go near this creature simply for the name. After all, people tend to not really like pigeons. However, some people did go to Papua New Guinea to see the black-naped pheasant pigeon because it's one of the most rare birds on the planet. It's so rare, in fact, that the team that searched for it said that it was basically like trying to find a unicorn. But you may be asking, why is it so rare? Well, that's because there hadn't been proof of that bird's existence in 140 years. The last time that it was ever captured on film was actually in 1882, and so they wanted to find the bird, get all the information they could, and then do the best to protect it. Number 2. Giant Pyrosome now, you may have seen videos in the past of a diver meeting a giant pyrosome and swimming with it while their film crew watched in awe at the creature before them. That's definitely an accurate reaction to this creature. Or, in point of fact, I should say that these are creatures, plural. That's because the giant pyrosome is not a single organism, it's actually a colony. And there are thousands of little clones within this one entity, and they all move together to create the being that you see before you. They can be very long and are definitely something that you don't see every day in the depths. Plus, even if you were to hurt it, so long as part of the colony still exists, they can stay alive and grow back to their previous size. That's freaky! Number 1. The Attics the tale of why the Attics is almost extinct is sadly a tale that's as old as time. They were once a creature that could be found in the deserts of Africa, which included the Sahara, in really good numbers. But now, you're going to rarely ever see them because people have hunted them down to near extinction. Which is a shame, really, not only because the Attix does have a really cool set of horns, they're also the pinnacle of adapting to desert settings through evolution. They have a coat that can reflect sunlight to keep them cool, and they also have the ability to absorb water from whatever they eat no matter how little, and then store it within themselves. Conservation efforts have begun to help save their numbers, but it's going to be an uphill battle for sure. 
That's all from the realm of animals and those that we don't get to see very much in our world. Were you surprised by some of the animals that we revealed in this video today? And did you know about all of these animals before I showed them to you? Perhaps there's another rare animal that could have been on this list. Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments down below. Check out the other cool things that are currently showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.